gonna kind of sit and chat with you all for a little bit until 725 passes around welcome 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 what a wonderful hop this has been i have totally enjoyed the hop totally enjoyed it you all did an excellent job and if you missed anything please go back and look at the playlist which reminds me i want to put this one in the playlist look at the playlist and when you visit these streams please be sure to leave a thumbs up and like comment share subscribe like i because janet nash was so kind to to drop a link to i think i think it's willow willocks channel i found a new channel tonight several of us subscribed to her so when you share when you share that brings in new subbies to us and that just is so encouraging because if you're an active subby youtube probably will not delete you they he, they could but uh you know it just so encourages everybody so please like comment share subscribe i cannot say that enough i'm almost becoming a nag i'm almost becoming a nag like comment share subscribe hi aaron welcome aaron aaron i'm going to fill in for aaron tonight um I'm not going to go into the reasons why, but she had her own reasons. And uh, Aaron, I totally understand. Thank you for popping in and saying hi. I so appreciate it. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Mary Lou. So welcome. And uh, like I said, I'm just going to kind of sit out here and for a few minutes and welcome folks in. Hi, Sylvia. Welcome, Sylvia. You did a wonderful job on your stream. Loved it. Ah, you're welcome, Erin. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I got ice water tonight. I have Beth. Beth was having this cough. I wanted to. I, I, I wanted to clear up Beth's cough for her, and so I'm coughing. But I have ice water tonight. I gave Beth kind of a hard time tonight. I have to say, I gave her a hard time on her quiet book. She did a really good job. She did a good job on it. I told her she handled my hard time very well. <laughs> I wouldn't give anybody a hard time if I didn't think that they could take it. So, Beth, Beth did not do a room she did a quiet book and she actually did a very very uh, involved quiet book which would keep children or and or children of all ages sitting on that back porch for hours playing in that journal so beth i get it <laughs> uh i don't think she's in here yet hi sherry hi Brittany. hi connie Welcome, ladies. Did I say hello, Mary Lou? Welcome, Mary Lou. So, we have been tackling quiet books with a house theme. And I have to tell you, everybody, everybody who's, who streamed today far surpassed Mary. <laughs> you guys, you did an excellent job from... From the first video to the last video, just excellent. I thoroughly enjoyed each and every one of them. And Deb Farrell, she did this tiny house, and she kept saying she didn't have time, and, and she was really busy. Then she opened up her her uh, book, which was kind of like a trifold folder, and she opened it up, and this wonderful little cottage, tiny house cottage popped up. It was wonderful. And then she showed us how to do a pop-up by doing a tree. And then in the back, on the top of the folder, she had a tree with a stained glass window. And she was telling how she would have liked to put an arboretum in there. And I thought that was really a really good idea. Deb, you did an excellent, excellent job. Diana did a fairy garden. And she did 
fairy glitter fairy dust and I'm going oh my goodness she's brave I hope that, that I hope that that little baggie she put her fairy dust in holds <laughs> yeah. so she did a wonderful garden fair fairy garden um Carol with Spring Cauldron did uh, a sea, was it the Sea Witch? The the Underground Sea Witch? Do, I have you right, right? Let me look, make sure I'm telling this right. I get you mixed up with Sylvia. Do, 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 do. A Haunted House, Magical House. It was Sylvia who did the Sea Witch one. A Haunted Magical House. Oh, and she was in another one who was saying, oh, my book's simple. And I'm sitting there going, simple is okay, you know, especially if you're doing it for children or grandchildren, you know, they, they, uh, they can handle simple and simple. You took those steps, you took those steps to create something and then you can build on it. I thought your book was wonderful, Carol, Whispering Cauldron. And then Beth Schuler did a, a quiet book on a back porch. And Ann Lahr, oh, Ann Lahr, she just knocked it out of the water. What can I say? That Confederate Mint book is just totally awesome. Totally, totally awesome. All the pictures on that wall with the wallpaper. Loved it. Just totally loved it, Ann. I didn't get to watch Ann's to the last because I was sitting up in here, but you can be sure I'll go back and watch. So I'm going to be on, since I'm coming on early, I might leave early tonight because like everybody else, I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of tired. Well, I think there's enough people in here now that I can go ahead and start. Hi, Janet. Hi, Angie. Hi, Barbara Clark. Yes, you go back, Barbara, and look at the morning artists. Janet Nash and, and uh, Sylvia. Um... Uh, Janet Nash and Sylvia and Mrs. Gigi. Mrs. Gigi's book with kitchen was so darling. Just so darling. I loved it, Mrs. Gigi. And Vanessa. Vanessa did a, a cottage kitchen. Um, I think it was a Victorian house kitchen. And Sylvia D is the one who did the Sea Witch ha house with the magic room. And I think she had... She had a little drawer that opened up. That just fascinated me. Fasc she, she cut all these niches out of her book. Totally fascinated me. Then, this afternoon, between, between hops here, let me get back into chat. Between hops, Mary went to the library. And I have a book haul, but I'm not going to do that tonight. Because I'll go down a bunny trail if I do. Hi, Connie, Stanley. Welcome, welcome. I think I've welcomed everybody in here. Julie, hi, Julie. Sylvia D, Sherry. Arlene, hi, Arlene. Tanya, there's Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Welcome, welcome. Tanya, Tanya and Lisa are doing a messy, a messy uh, studio tour to where she, they're challenging us to clean up our studios. I brought home a box of books. <laughs> oh dear, Tanya, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? <laughs> There's Beth. Beth, you got an A+. Plus. Beth Schuler, I gave you an A+, plus because you put the door to Anne's room. A+, plus for that. Very good. Uh, Beth, I called Beth the rebel streamer. Um, Beth, Beth just has her own mind. What can I say? <laughs> Give her an assignment and she'll she'll interpret it. <laughs> I love you, Beth. I love you. You did an excellent job, Beth. That book that you did was would have kept people your your grandchildren or like I said, children of all ages occupied on that back porch from sun up to sundown. You had a very, very, very good book. With a with a door that went <laughs> into Anne's room. I gave you an A plus, Beth. <laughs> I like Beth. Are you telling on me, Arlene? 
and Mary might go shopping tomorrow. <laughs> I might. Don't tell anybody. There's, they call it the, what do they call it? Junk Street, Junk Street uh, Flea Market. I think that's what they call it. And uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of money though. I have to tell you, I brought home a whole box of books and I only, and this was the, this was actually the second day of the book sale. It was a library. And uh, I brought home a whole box of books and I only spent $15. And that book, that box of books was heavy. I actually had it in two boxes and the clerk packed it all up in one box. And then she offered to help me carry it out. <laughs> I'm going, no, I'll handle it. Aw. You have your first corner cleaned already, Tanya? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, Tanya. Thumbs up to you. She just can't buy anything, <laughs> Angie says. Angie, I have to buy something. Uh, actually, this this really, this junk street market, it truthfully is um, more of a, a looks look see flea market unless i find a stack of old photos or something like that i generally don't buy a mu uh, much at this it's a flea market uh sidewalk sale and if i find a stack of magazines they didn't have my any no magazines at that book sale today i was so disappointed i wanted magazines to cut up as if i don't have magazines to cut up it'll be about a month <laughs> Oh, dear. All right. Well, let me tell you. Let's jump into... You guys are going... And I wonder when she's going to actually work in this lobby. And I'm going to do that tonight. I've been putting it off. And now I have plenty of time to work on it. But before I do... Yep. Yep. I was, I was actually thinking about Fibsville. And this bed and breakfast has to be in Fibsville. So... I went in, and you guys, you gave me, I, I love doing lists with you guys, because we have a list of 80 different house types, and then this morning, I didn't number them, we have at least 25 plus um, list of interactive Victorian elements. I'm going to tackle a couple of those tonight, and uh, then after the stream this morning, I was thinking of list of rooms that I want to put in my Victorian bed and breakfast. And this kind of comes from me. Of course, the lobby. And that's what I'm tackling now. I want a wraparound porch. That's what I'm going to do on the cover of this book. I love this. I, I think I'm going to cut the cover. Yes. I'm going to cut the cover to match. The, whoops, it's upside down. It, to match the shape of the house, which is right here. So the entire book is going to be the shape of this Victorian house. I'm going to cut all the pages, the shape of this house, and the back cover. And I'm going to put a wraparound porch that will wrap around this way and around that way. So I'm going to have a wraparound porch. I need a parlor. I decided I'm going to, I'm going to have six room for six bedrooms, which would mean that well, I could have six guests or, or uh, six occupants in six rooms occupied now uh a man and a wife or a mother and daughter might stay in one room depending on what they wanted um but i'm also going to have one master suite and i'm going to have one styled for children in case you know in case there's a teenager or some young ones in there who can be in their own room i'm going to have one styled for for children i'm going to have the master suite I'm going to do a Victorian elevator. Oh, you guys, I found this wonderful Victorian elevator, and I kind of want to tackle that tonight, later. A formal dining room, a library. I want two meeting rooms uh, for different guest functions. A sunroom, a pantry, an outside kitchen. Um, an outside kitchen would be like if you're doing canning in the summertime. And the, I, I think Victorians did that. Um, you know, they have huh, air. They don't do their canning in their kitchen. They do it all in an outside room, like an outside porch, but it's an outside kitchen. A uh, parking area, a garden and lawn maze, an attic, 
We're going to go up to the attic tonight. Erin was going to do the mansion with the attic. And since I'm filling in for her, I'm going to go up to my own attic. <laughs> we're going to have an attic. At least we'll have the door leading to the attic. Actually, we're going to take the elevator up to the attic. Oh, and you know, there's something else I want to add in here. And that's, um, oh, what do they call them? Uh, the the food uh, the food elevator type thing the food elevator where they you put a tray on in the little cubby hole and you pull the bell and it goes up pull the string and also a laundry chute got to have a laundry chute and this is more for the housekeeper. <laughs> Which is probably be the lady of the house or maybe a, a maid if you're fortunate to hire one. And um, I want a bell pull. Bell pulls are essential. And along with that, curtain curtain ties with, with tassels. I love my Victorian. All right, let's go back up the attic. I have to have a picket fence. You have to have a bed and breakfast sign. I'll have a game room and theater, and there's going to be a cottage house. Now, I'm thinking the proprietors can live in the cottage house because they want to be close by. I don't think that in this case they're going to be renting out the cottage house, at least now. It's got to have a basement, a greenhouse, a cutting garden, a cutting flower garden, a vegetable garden. You have to have bathrooms and a spa. And then I'm calling this room the special place because that's what they call it in this book that I'm altering. And of course, there's an the art studio because we're, we're, we're mixed media artists. And here's where I'm saying the, the owners are going to be in the cottage. I need a patio, a deck, sidewalks. Now, this is where you guys can help me. I've been debating about having resident animals like a cat that wander, a big, a big furry cat. A, a resident cat or resident dog. Now, I think some bed and breakfasts have them and some don't because people have allergies. So that's kind of a question mark for me. French doors, shutters. I'm going to put a front, uh, a wreath on the front door. Uh, I forgot stained glass windows. You're going to do all this, Mary? Well, these are my ideas. This is an idea book. I don't know how much you're going to get done. Crown molding. Got to have crown molding. And then this morning we were talking about having brochures and magazines. We're going to have a current issue of the Daily Fibber in Fibsville, which is our daily newspaper, the Daily Fibber. And then when the guests come, I want to present them with a package that's going to have a little journal where they can record their stay and take it home with them, a pen and stationery with envelopes that they can, and postcards where they can mail things out. And speaking of mail, I'm going to have a little mailbox where they can drop their mail every day, and it'll be a U.S. post box where the mailman will actually pick it up. Uh, a tea service, and here's my packet of welcome information. Um, then, then you got to have a boathouse if you're on a lake with a swimming hole. And uh, a stereoscope, which is kind of like an old-fashioned uh, viewer. And you, you can buy those cards, and they have the same picture on both sides. And when you look into the stereoscope, you see a three-dimensional object. I'd like to get one of my hands on one of those. I have a book. I have a book that details objects in every room. And I might get that out of a Victorian of a Victorian house. And, and uh, I might get that out. I don't have it with me now. but And then I want a piano with a big piano scarf. And here's where I wrote the food elevator, laundry chute, bell pull, uh, curtains with tassels and stained glass. So these are just things I thought of this morning. Whoa! All right, now I want to go into um, the history. I was this. I was also thinking about this this morning. Uh, usually, when you look on for bed and breakfasts on the internet, and usually these homes are 
are big old Victorian homes. I mean, the Victorian ones. And they've been, they have a history behind them. Like some well-to-do person built it. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to work on is the history. So the location is going to be in Fibsville. We've, we've got to have this in Fibsville. And it's going to be in a park area around the lake. And that's where I get the boathouse. And, of course, the dock. So, and, of course, along with that, you got to have canoes and all the canoes and boats and it, it, probably not speed boats or anything like that and a swimming area. And so we'll have to have a lifeguard on duty. But this Victorian book that I'm altering is located in Fibsville, and it was the the home of the former resident of Fibsville's uh, Judge Cook, Judge Benjamin Cook. So he's a new Fibsville character, Judge, Judge uh, Benjamin Cook. So in his family, he had three boys and three girls and his wife. The current owner is Judge Cook's and I'm going to say great, 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 great. I'll have to figure out how many greats. Grandson, Benjamin Cook, owns this and operates it now. So Benjamin, and I don't have his character developed yet, the, the owner. But he'll have a wife and kids and all of that. The name of the bed and breakfast, I was thinking about calling it the Cook Inn. But I don't want it to be thought of as an inn. I want it to be like the cook bed and breakfast or the cook house or the cook mansion bed and breakfast. And so I need a sign with that. And I think the sign is going to be in the same shape that I have my pages cut in. They're going to be in this. The sign will be in this shape. And it'll have, you know, writing on it and everything. But it'll be out front. And so... About this Judge Cook, he started out, he went to law school, he was an attorney, but there was, there's not much crime in Fibsville. However, we have this Fibsville mystery going on, but this Judge Cook lived from 1860 to 1928. So, um, Officer Orville happens to be a great, 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 great <laughs> grandson too. So Officer Orville is related to Judge Cook. Just to give you some background, this is how I'm building the history of my bed and breakfast. Judge Benjamin Cook's wife was Lily or Lillian. And she was a great, 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 I think it's five greats. I figured it out. If she was born in 1832 and if every 20 years, I figured it out here. If she was born, um, if she was born in 18, 1862, I don't know if I have that date right. Yeah, 1862, because he was born in 1860. If, if she was born in 1862, her great, 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 great granddaughter is destiny, our destiny. So there's a history here of Destiny's relation to Lily, Lillian, who is the wife of Judge Benjamin Cook. And Officer Orville is also a great, 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 great grandson. So this kind of, by distant relation, Officer Orville and Destiny are distant relatives. Isn't that interesting? Um... Judge Cook's son's names were Benjamin the First, Orville, and Peter. His daughter's names were Helene, Elizabeth, and Katrina. So that's as far as I got with the history. And as I develop this more, I might add more history of, of how this passed through the family. But that is where I am and what I did there. Woo! Let me look at chat. A dumb waiter. Yes, a dumb waiter. Let me write that down. Thank you, Arlene. That was the word I was going for. A dumb waiter and a laundry chute. Dumb waiter. 
that's what I was was thinking of. We got a direct TV advertisement today. <laughs> I wrote on the back of the envelope. Who killed JR? <laughs> it's JC. Bootsy, it's oh, it's JC. Are you talking about Dallas? <laughs> we do have a Fibsville mystery going on. So there is a little crime. We found we found our cre our, our character, our creature, our character that uh, we developed. We developed a character for a mystery story and then we killed him. Uh um was it John Charles Young? I'd have to look it up. It's not on the tip of my tongue. Arlene says, gotta go, be right back. Aunt Beck, definitely chubby. Uh, what did Aunt Beck say? Mary's book is gonna be three feet wide. Well, that brings me to this. I'm going to deconstruct this book. Because I cannot put... I cannot put in dimensional objects in here without it alligatoring out. And you know what's interesting about this book? It is a stitched book. But I'm going to deconstruct it. In fact, I might start doing that right now so I can actually get to doing something. Yes, it's going to be a fat book. It, it, it might be three feet thick by the time I get done, if I get done. <laughs> this isn't... I have to laugh because um, some of you who, who don't feel like you've done very much have done far more than I have. <laughs> so, you know, when we do these projects, these are to inspire. They don't have to be completed projects. Uh, um, no, they don't have to be completed. Uh, even though we do have the pre-processed videos to work on, um, I don't want the streamers to feel like they have to get their project done the same month. This could this could go on forever. <laughs> this could go on forever, and it might. I'm still working on my lighthouse book that I did with Beth. I can't find it. I'm looking for it. Now, what I want to do, I want to actually work on this collar. So we deconstructed the book here, and that's as far as I'm going to go with that. So let me put it out. Of, oh, and at that library sale, you guys, I can't tell you how many books I held in my hands and said, what a fabulous journal cover. What of is make a beautiful journal cover? And then I said, I can't put one more book in that box. <laughs> so there is, that library sale was really a good sale. I picked up a lot of art books. Um, a couple, I picked up a 1933 or 1934 almanac. It was very interesting because that was, I need uh, Becky's mug rug. I don't know what I did with it my water glasses sweating all right this picture i've decided that i'm going to put it in the lobby because i need the lobby i need i need this to be the lobby and i've already explained to you it, it'll actually go here i've already explained to you that victorian homes i want this when people come to the bed and breakfast, the, the cook-in or the cook-house, whatever I decide to call it in the end, I want them to feel like they're walking in a home, not a hotel. So I want my lobby to be very comfortable. So this is going to go, I'm going to cut it out here. Yeah, I'm going to cut it out. I can cut it and I actually want to get my lobby finished tonight but in this lobby so I have the fireplace a chair but I want to make a chair in the same pop-out style that uh, Ann Lar made now mine won't mine will be a box that folds in but it won't pop out like, you know, it won't, because I'm not going to put a, a piece like this. I'm just going to make it, excuse me, the chair dimensional. So if anything, I'm going to get the lobby done tonight. 
but I can't wait to show you some of the things I'm going to do yet. To, hopefully tonight, if I can get... I don't want to be on ultra late because because I don't I don't want to uh, from what 7:30 about to 10 that's plenty of time for a stream that's plenty of time all right we're gonna set this over here for a minute and this is going to fit let's see let's put a paper behind that so that we can actually see so I want it to fit I want it to fit on here and I might have to let me cut this by So I'm going to I'm going to put it down in here. Now a little of that will show. And I think I'll paint that. But let's take one page. One page. And I think I'll put a couple pillows in here. I want an ink bottle and room keys and a chair and maybe a lamp. Now what I have for the chair Oh, you guys, I have stuff piled up here. What I have for the chair is, let me get it, Lori Pink Girlie gifted me with this American Art Review magazine. And I love this chair. I might put a stuffed pillow in there. So what I'm going to try to do is cut out that, look at that Renoir painting up there. Is that Renoir? I think that's, it's either Renoir or Monet. I think that's a Renoir. Uh, I'm going to cut out this chair, and I want to make a little dimensional box to put that chair on. So it'll kind of, uh, I wouldn't say it'll pop up as much as it will be kind of pop out. I'm just going to cut this out right here. And there's a piece of modern art on the back of it. So, And look at that rug in there. Very cool rug. So let me... Fussy cut this out. And what's going on in chat? A fireplace. Yes, we need a fireplace. Hi, Renee. You love the magazines. I do too, Melissa. Hi, Sue. Call it the come on in. Oh, I love that. Come on in. But it's not an inn. It's a bed and breakfast. I want it to say B&B. &B. I love it saying come, come on in, though. That's a really good idea. Think of a name with B&B, &B, with Fibsville. And it doesn't have to have the name Cook in it. Um, it could. All right, we're going to fussy cut that chair. Let me put this magazine back over here. Let me put this magazine back over here. Yeah, it's too big. Uh, get out smaller. See, that chair will fit in here nice right in front of the fireplace. Um, I wish I could put it that way. I might have to... Well, it isn't going to fit in here. Unless I do put it in front of the fireplace, maybe down in here. I'm not sure I like it there. Boo-hoo! Maybe I'll have to cut out one of these chairs and make them pop out, because this... If I put this here, it's going to be right, you know, it needs to be facing the fireplace like that. I could have it pop up. I could have a, a pop up. But that, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like it fits to me. I need a different chair. So, let me just put this aside. I'll, maybe I'll find another place for it in another room. I like that chair. I don't think this book has another... I saved another piece off, but I think it was a... I think it was a... Uh, I don't know where I saved it. This painting. I might have lost the place. I think it was a flowers. Look at that Art Nouveau. Oh, I love it. This could go in the Art Nouveau book. 
Art Nouveau. Oh, more Art Nouveau. Oh, no. Uh, uh, I'm in the wrong... I'm in the wrong book. I'm in the wrong journal. i got to put that away or I'll go down a rabbit trail. So I guess what I'll do is pop out one of these chairs. Or maybe both of them. Let's pop them both out. But I have to cut them out very carefully. I, and when I say pop out, I mean I'm just going to build a little dimensional box behind them, I think. I think. We'll see. Either that or I'm going to destroy this picture. And we will see. We will see what I have. What... Usually when I go down a trail like this and I'm not happy with what I'm doing right away, if I just keep working with it, if I just keep working with it, in the end, I'm happy. So let's just proceed with these chairs. I might have to nick off the part of that table there, but that's okay too. And let's see. I'm debating whether I want this to pop out. I think I'll have to. Otherwise, I'll be cutting it in half. So we're going to cut here. And we're going to leave that throw. I'm not going to cut that. That throw falls underneath of that table. But I'm not going to. They're going, oh, Mary, you're destroying that picture. Oh, no. Now. I've got some text behind there, and I think I want to paint this. Uh, let's paint it with my buttermilk paint. Buttermilk with a little, oh, let's see, hold it, let me look. Buttermilk, where did you go? Right here. Buttermilk with a little, a little, uh, maybe a mint green. Uh, or a marsh green would work too. Because the walls are green on this picture. The walls are green. And I put this paper behind. And let me reach for a towel because I do not like a wet brush. Hi, Diana. Riri. Hi, Riri. Says she's lurking. Hi, Clint. Sue Hennessy is here. Welcome, everybody who's come in. What I really want to work on tonight. This is, this is not what I really want to work on. I want to work on that Victorian elevator going up to the attic. And we're going to do that on one of these pages. I think on this one. Because I could see an elevator going up here. And wait till you see the elevator. Yeah, Victorian houses did have elevators. And if this is a renovated Victorian house, you know, it's been remodeled. Well... Looks like I've got it plugged out. Where are you at, Penelope? I need your pins. Give me a pen, please. I've got this totally plugged up. Wipe it off before I give it back to her. Maybe I'll just stick it in here for now. I might need it when I get to the blue. So we're going to have some... Some of that, and some, well, not blue, marsh green. I think that's going to be okay. And let's get a brush. My fan brush should not be left in the water like that, Mary. I'm a terrible, I'm terrible on my brushes. Just a terrible person. And let me wash this brush out. Eek. 
should not leave my brushes in the water. I mean, it's okay to put them in the water, but leaving them in the water. That's... Oh, and this, this kind of matches the green that's on this. We just want it to sort of match because it's going to show. And I've got this paper behind it, so we're just going to paint this out. Interesting information, but... And I think I'm going to need some more. And it's hot in here tonight. So my craft paint is going to dry fast. So, we have another Fibsville family to play with out there. <laughs> it had I had to make it a Fibsville bed and breakfast. It just... It wasn't going to, it was not going to be anything else other than a Fibsville one. Oh, I'm liking that. Oops, i got to be careful. Don't want to rip the book. Well, although I think these pages will be coming out eventually. Because this book is going to grow fat. Alright, that's pretty good. Most of this under here is going to get covered up. All right, so let's give it a dry and some of that text is going to show through out even after I dry it. I might have to give it another coat. Just the nature of craft paint. It is, craft paint is not highly pigmented. There's a certain transparency to it. I don't mind this showing through, but I don't want the... Well, I could have it showing through, but I really don't want it. Let's give it another co coat. And a little more green. Oops, that's too much green. Let's give it some more buttermilk. And I keep putting my brush back in the water. I don't like a wet brush. All right. Now I mix it right on the page. What we really want covered is this text area up here. The bottom part doesn't matter so much. Okay, well, let's see if that worked. Like, when they walk in, when the guests walk into the lobby, I want them to feel immediately at home. A bed and breakfast is kind of like a home away from home. Or maybe the home that you would like your home to be if you liked Victorian. I have to say, I love Victorian houses, but I think it would be a bear to keep one clean. Uh, I prefer, if, if, if I had to choose a house to live in, at my stage of life, I would choose a one-level cottage style. Alright, so I want this to go on here, and then I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut on the from the back here. So this is going to go on here, and then I want these chairs to kind of pop out, just uh, be dimensional. Um, we'll handle that later. Let's let's glue this down, and I've got fresh glue out. Same old glue pot with fresh glue, and I'm done with this. So let's put it away. Uh, sort of put it away. One of the things I want to do, and I want to train myself to put my paint colors back in the color category. So if I want greens, I'll reach for the tray of green. Right now I got blue with white and yellow with red and black with orange. All right, now I need to glue this on the back. Let me reach in here. And we're going to use some parchment paper because that's what I reached for.
and I want to glue this, totally glue this, and I just, let me wash out that brush again that I just painted with. Yes. And it doesn't have to be totally clean, but almost clean. Let me get rid of that towel, get another one out. So I have to say, by doing this, by doing this, bed and breakfasts have just fascinated me. I love reading about the history of them. And I know there's so much more to learn about them. And I was telling, I was telling the folks earlier this morning, I don't think I ever stayed in a bed and breakfast other than maybe like with a, with our needlework group and I don't know if you could call the place where we stayed I went to London or to well it was a long London trip to England with a needlework group in 1998 and we stayed in uh, Cotswolds and uh, I don't think you could call it a bed and breakfast it was more uh, well, it was a converted mansion was what it was, or what it looked like to me. And uh, I was traveling by myself, so I had a single room. And it's kind of funny because when we checked in, the lady said, I have a special room. Who's the lady who's traveling by herself? I got a special room for her. And I stepped up to the plate and said, that's me. And uh, my special room... <laughs> My special room turned out to be the servant. It was just a tiny little room. I was expecting, you know, I was expecting the royal treatment. <laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't get it. I look back on it now and I laugh. But, uh, let's see, there's the shape of my house. I'm going to put that over here and kind of glue this down if I can. So, but... It was a cozy room, but it was so small. The shower, the shower was so tiny I could barely fit in it. I mean, it was really a small, tiny bathroom. That maid or servant or whoever they were, they had to be skinny. They had to be skinny. And I'm not obese, you know. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not, I, I can handle, but I can't handle it. I could not handle that tiny of a room. Now, let's just make sure this is glued down good. That's my memory of that. <laughs> and it was a fun place. I had fun going around the grounds and taking pictures. I did not do a lot of art then. I did make a scrapbook, which is in Wisconsin, of our London trip and the places where we went. But that was more of a needlework. That was more needlework related. Let me get a cutting board out here. The smaller one. Yes. And I want to cut. I want to cut these off here. I think I got it pretty well glued down. I'm gonna smash it down. Get those air bubbles out. You want all the air bubbles out. I think this is where I'm going to put the elevator. <laughs> That's going to be a challenge, but I think it's going to be fun to do. Now, I'm going to try to cut this by, well, maybe I will use a ruler. If I can find it, what did I do with my ruler? Here. So I just want an angle here and that needs to come up flat with this and these may not all match in the long run I mean I might have some overlays in there but that's okay this is just a altered book 
hand. Let's cut this out. So Judge Benjamin Cook. 1862, I think I said 1928. I'll have to look at his death record. No, I'm not getting that cut. There we go. And right there. And then we just want to cut. This is a curve. Cut a, a curve here, and there, and I'm staying away from my fingers, honest. And that just goes at a get this where I can cut it where I can see it it starts here it starts here comes a train our front door is open or the door is open it's got a screen door but we can hear the train really good from in here I, I went to that library sale <laughs> <laughs> As I went out of town, that train was on the track. And he, of course, was, the, ra the, the arms were down and everything, so you couldn't go, you couldn't go around. It was against the law to go around them, I think. Anyway, he backed up <laughs> one hundredth of a tenth of a mile an hour. <laughs> oh, dear. It was really slow. Finally, he backed up enough that the, the arms went up and you could go, but it took a while. So I went on my merry way, you know. I said, okay, I'm not doing anything other than going to the library. If a book gets sold that I wanted, I wasn't supposed to have it. That was my attitude. Although I'm going, i got to get to that library sale. <laughs> Move along, train. <laughs> anyway, I went to the library sale. And uh, when I came back, that train was still on the track, still backing up. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know if it was the same train. I mean, it had to be, I had to be gone a couple hours. I'm not sure this is, I'm not sure I got that really glued in there good. I'm going to cut a little slip here and open it. And put some glue in there. See, that's not glued good. And you can do that, especially if you're going to alter this. Let's cut this here. If you're going to alter your books, you know, and if you feel like you did not get that glue good, you can split it open and where it comes up, you can glue it down better. And get rid of that air bubble in there. That's the only one I feel too bad. There might be a little one in here. But I'm going to put my elevator in there anyway. So, all right. So, right there is my bed and breakfast. And what I cut, did I cut that off? I guess I cut that off there. Do I want to cut that? I cut that off. Let's just cut the rest of it off. I didn't mean to do that. I must have trimmed it from... I'm not sure if I did that tonight. I don't think I did it tonight because I painted that like that. I think it was already cut off. It was a flaw from the other morning. Let's put this board back under here. What do I have there? My pen? My knife. And we can cut the this. Like this. Because I'm going to use this as a pattern anyway. 
I need these to all be the same, at least in this segment. There we go. Not too bad of a deal. Now up here, I might just draw some things, but I'm going to write the word lobby in here. And I might try to get the name, but I'm going to leave the top area of this one page. I'm going to leave it. Look at my glue job. Real good glue job, Mary. This is why I don't, you know, I just got, I was sure I glued out in there. In fact, I can, and I put my brush in the water again. That's why I don't like a wet brush, too. Let's fix this glue job. We want a good glue job on it. glue facing sides together there. And where else was it? Here. See, look, it pulls apart on me. Could be because I'm gluing to paint. It could be because it's school blue. Oh, let's see. Honestly, I'm not a happy camper. Not a happy camper. This is curling up here where I cut it. And curling up there. So I want to put an, uh, an ink bottle in here with an, uh, and a registration book, a guest book. Those are going to be kind of my interactive elements. And then on the back, I'm going to do the elevator, and I want it to go up to the attic. So that'll be an interactive element. And then these chairs, wherever they floated off to, uh, I can't really call them interactive, but they're going to be dimensional. So I'm going to have the guest book, room keys, and the elevator going up to... The elevator is going to be my door. The elevator will have a door, and the elevator is going to go up to the attic. And I was going to have it go to Aaron's attic mansion room, but it'll just be the attic room of this. And these, I want to be not so much uh, pop-up as dimensional. Now, you could do the same thing. You could do the same thing with uh, pop dots. You know, you could put pop dots and let it pop up. But I think I'm going to try Anne's little box. And maybe I'll do a couple little boxes. Let's see. Because I want to I learn that technique. And she was measuring. <laughs> she said, some people don't like to measure, but I don't have anything against that. <laughs> I was watching her. What, when did she say that? I giggled at it. So I need some strong paper. And, and what I have available is, oh, look, there's green. We could cut. I almost feel like cutting a shape like this and put it in here rather than that green paint let's do that let's do that mary's gonna play it's my play time hi deb Daryl. you did a wonderful wonderful tiny book i so enjoyed that 
Excellent. Excellent, Deb. So we're going to cut a shape out of this. And it may not fit exactly, but that's okay because it'll have green. I'll try to make it exact as I can. And then I'm going to use more of this same paper for the for the pop-up. It's not really a pop-up, it's a dimensional piece. So like that. And let's cut that out. My little scissors here. Janet says, be right back. Need to pick my son up and heat up his dinner. <laughs> He's got to have dinner, Janet. You go right ahead. Thank you for being in here, though. Mary, make sure your boxes all fold the same way. Okay. I'm only going to have one box on this page. Oh, you mean if I put more than one box on this back of this. That's a good suggestion. Thank you, Deb. Make sure that they fold all the same way. I'll probably flub it up right away. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm not sure that a box is the answer, except for I want to learn how to do it. So this is me learning. Deb said that she had never done pop-ups before. Now, I've done pop-ups. But I'm not sure I've done a box pop-up. Tanya was teaching us pop-ups in her totally, totally, totally junk journal. Um, what she did when she very st first started streaming. Tanya did, has done pop-ups. And she we did a lot of pop-ups with her. I'm going to cut this. This is not going to pop up. This is going to fit. Well, this isn't cut yet. It's going to fit in here like this because it'll match that green paint. And I'm doing that because I'm going to have this dimensional and this will just be a pattern behind it. This is kind of flimsy, but maybe if I put that box on there, it'll strengthen it. I should probably cut two of those, but more glue experience. So like I said, I have been totally, let me push my book up a little so you guys can see it better. I have totally been enjoying reading about bed and breakfasts. I'll probably get all this spam mail in my mailbox. <laughs> but I, I have just, I've been surfing bed and breakfasts, looking at the different rooms. And I'm still debating whether I want a resident animal. Uh, because your guests, your guests may be, may be allergic to animals. Let's see, I'm going to cut this one a little better in here. Right up in here, I did not trace that very good. I really like Deb's little cottage. It just took my heart. Little tiny cottage. She was, Deb says, I've never done pop-ups. I didn't have time to fully develop this book like I wanted it. Then she opened it up. Then she opened it up and voila. She had a little cobble, she had a little cobblestone um, sidewalk in there. Just darling. All right, I'm liking that. And, and that's just going to be the background for this. So let's glue this in. Hopefully. What do I do with my... 
my paper. Did it blow away on me? I got the fan going. Oh, let's pull another sheet out. I don't know what I did with it. It's probably under my nose. <laughs> Things fall. Craft a lanch. And this time I did not put my brush back in the water. But my my phone cord keeps getting in the way of my brush. Alright, I want to get plenty of glue on this. Seems like I never get enough glue. So it'll probably squeeze out. Now I got that thoroughly covered. I know I do. I'm gonna stick that up there and put the box on top of it so it won't blow away. And this goes in here. And this is just to give this area some background. I want this to kind of pop up. So, this is, let's do Anne's measuring. From here to here is three inches. I knocked my brush down. Is three inches from here to here. But I don't want it clear three inches. So I'm going to make it two and a half. Two and a half by one and a half. Let's get my cutting board out. Let's see if I can do this. This is, this is Ann Lars <laughs> inspiration. So, um, I said two and a half by one and a half. So I want this cut at one and a half this way. This will be the width. There's one and a half. Now, uh, two and a half and two and a half, though, is I might need another one and a half here. Uh, two and a half and two and a half is five. Where's my ruler? And if I make a a half inch, I think will be good enough for the. And what did I do with that scoreboard? I had the scoreboard out. Where is it? Rhonda sent me a scoreboard. And I want to get used to using it. I may not be able to put my hands on it. I'm still cleaning. I thought I'd put it over here. Let me look. I don't know what I did with the scoreboard. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend my days looking for it. Oh here it is. I found it. Found it. We're gonna use the scoreboard. And let's move this a minute. So if we make the, the little side inches a half inch. And I actually keep the little score thing with it. So a half inch. A half inch for the side. Uh, two and a half inches. So that's a half inch. One. Can't 
read this. One, one and a half, two and a half to three. That would make it two and a half there. And then another half inch. And if I'm lucky, one half, one and two, I just need, I need another half inch because I need five of them. So I need another half inch to hold that together. And I could just tape that with double, well, let's make a, let's make one here. Where's my... scrap taper. Let's make one. Uh, a scoreboard or a cutting board. I'm really proud I could put my hands on that cutting board when I did. So I'm going to make this rather than a half inch. I'm going to make it an inch because it needs to it needs to be glued on. So but it needs to be one and a half inch wide and one inch one inch long and then I'm going to score at the half inch and that'll hold these two together. We'll see how this works. I'm not totally sure how this is going to work. We'll see. So we want to score this at a half inch. And let's put that bone folder away so I'll have it when I want it. And let's put my scoreboard down here. Now, I want to put this on here and it will tape on like that and is that too much no I don't think so we'll, we'll see it might half inch might be a little much but uh, it'll pop out <laughs> we'll see how I how, uh, how I learned my lesson here Let's get this thread off of this tape. Did Mary learn her lesson? And speaking of lessons, I was watching Vanessa. Was it Vanessa? Yeah. And she was taping. She was taping onto her piece here. And hopefully I can do it here right here and she put that tape there then when she went to tear it was that Vanessa who did that she held a ruler there and I might have to learn how to do this she held a ruler and she tore it well something like that mine didn't tear good she might have had a sharper edge here I'm gonna have to learn how she did that because she just snapped it off like that and I want to learn how to do that because I'm continually tugging at this to get it to get it <laughs> all right so let's see what I'm doing here though I'm gonna put this over here and then I need another piece here so let's see if I can accomplish that what did I do with it right here like that see I'm trying to learn from you guys learn little things so I usually just tear it but she used her ruler as a tear there like that very good Vanessa see I learn from you guys that's why we're here to learn from each other all right so this is going to go on top here and it doesn't matter if it's on top because this is all going to be underneath. And I'm just piecing this together because I didn't have a big enough sheet. And then this will go 
on there and it'll form a little a little boxy thing with open ends now I could have had the open ends on the side I, and I think that's what Anne did her open ends were on the side but I think I want mine to flatten that way so we're going to try this and see how it works. So Deb, I'm right there with you, learning about pop-ups. Learning about pop-ups in front of the whole wide world. There we go. So I want that to go on here. Now I want my chairs to go on here. Like so. And then it'll... It'll flatten out, but will it pop up again? It, they have to go like... Like that. So I have to be careful how I glue my box down. Because I need my chairs to... And I don't care if it just kind of pops out. That's kind of the... That's kind of the... Idea. And I might have to try it a couple times here before I get it so let's put let's put the chairs on the back first and I think I'm gonna have the hardest time of placing it but we're gonna put the chairs and I don't think I'm gonna worry about the backs of the chairs I'll just let them be what they are so let's put the chairs on here It'll, it's dimensional. I don't know how it's going to stay that way, but we'll see. We will see. I've got to look at my time. It's 8.30. Allie Kay says, pop outs at you when you turn the page. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be one of the first pages. The history is going to go on the on the front page. The front matter is going to be the history. All right. So we just want this to kind of go something like this. Maybe we'll make it at a slant, sort of. Like that. Like that. That's good. And I don't want it ultra, ultra, ultra dimensional anyway. So if it, if it pops out just a little, I'll be happy. And then you can kind of see that texture behind it, this textured scrapbook paper behind it, which I'm happy with. Now, I think if I just take and put tape on here, and when I place it, make sure that I have, have this matching. And if I have this matching... The rest should match. Good enough. Good enough. We'll try it. <laughs> and this will be one of my intro, my uh, interactive elements is this pop out. And next I'm going to do, I want to do the ink bottle and pen. And I think I'm going to place a little guest register there. But I think I'm going to put the ink bottle on here. And the guest register, they need another, I need another table is what I need. And I might do that later. But I want to do the ink bottle. And I want to do the keys. Oh no, and I want to do the elevator. And I've got to write the word lobby up here. And I still need to finish my dolls from last month. I'm still working on my dolls. Just Mary gets Mary gets involved, I'll tell you. All right. So if I'm careful and put this right right in right in there. That's good enough. All right, so it kind of pops up like that. Now I could put a couple pillows on there. It needs a couple pillows, maybe some pillows on the floor. 
we need some pillows but I don't want to get sidetracked so I want to do my ink bottle and ink pen next maybe I'll save this for the ink pen so let's let's close this book for a while and see if these pages won't flatten out a little I'm gonna work on here I'm gonna work right on here and I'm gonna reach for what did I do with it it's here somewhere <laughs> well I'll show you some of the things I pulled out I pulled this out because I thought a bed and breakfast has to have sort of a, a male themed room and I thought this would be nice for the wallpaper or chairs or something in the mail room rather than so much lace, a, a masculine room. This is some lace that I found in a kit that I got for 50 cents. I bought it for the lace and the flowers. Those flowers would be nice. Let's pull those flowers out of here. This has never been opened. Never been opened. Mary's opening it right here. In front. Oh, look, and there's some ribbon there, too. This was a kit. I never use this stuff for, I don't, I don't build that kind of stuff, but I love the flowers. We could use the flowers in there. And here's a piece of ribbon. Look at that ribbon. Wow. That's a nice big piece of cool ribbon. And let's just pull the lace out while I'm at it. I got a, I got a foam heart that I can use to stamp with. So I got all of this for 50 cents. Oh, this isn't ribbon. This is this isn't lace. This is string. They crocheted. They gave you crochet thread. <laughs> they crocheted this, and they gave you the thread to crochet with. Well, I still got it for. I thought it was lace. It almost looked like lace in the package. That's all right. We'll take some crochet thread. I'll use it. So I got that. I'm gonna put this over here, out of my way. I also got some red polka dot. I'm not sure why I pulled that. Um, I got some lacy lace here. I'm, I'm just, I'm digging down to what I want for the pen. I got some Battenberg lace that I thought would be fun to put in this book someplace. This was a Battenberg doily. Uh, but this was, this was made in China. <laughs> this was made in China. I'm not sure where I got it, but it's still Battenberg. It'll go good. It's not a hand-done one, I doubt. Well, it could be hand-done in China. And then I found this. You know, I was doing my messy studio tour, and I found this, and I go, oh, I can use that to throw over a mess. <laughs> so I pulled that out. That's not for this. We'll throw it behind me. It's in the mess behind me. Um, I got this maybe for the garden area. I'm not sure. I just pulled it. I was going through my fabric. I got a gold piece for maybe a, <coughs> a pillow or a throw. Let's hold that out. I got some lacy lace. I also got this for the masculine room. We've got to do a masculine room. And then this is, you know, Victorian. <coughs> uh, not so much. I don't know if I'll use it, except I'll get inspired by it. You know how on the armrest of the chairs and on the backrest of sofas they have these doilies and here's more upholstery upholstery my sunflower cards where where's my hold it i'm getting there things are blowing around for me. Let me put these back up. Because these are things that I pulled that I'm going to make stuff out of. Well, i got another stack over here. I know I pulled it out. I've got to find it. I get stuff all ready and it doesn't help for me to get ready because <laughs> I'm still looking for what I want. 
I know I pulled it out. What did I do with it? Well, I could use an envelope like this, but that's, I want my stencil stuff. I want my stencil stuff. My page protectors. I know I pulled them out. They might have fallen like everything else. Irritates me. Irritates me to no end. I gotta get organized. I just have to get organized. Well, I'm not going to hold you guys up. I'm going to use this plastic envelope. Even though it has numbers in it, it's available. And what I want to do, I don't want the numbers. I want the plastic. And you would think I would have something here I could use other than that. Grr. Excuse me while I growl a little. Let me look around, see if I can't find something else to use. Usually I have, I have it staring in my face. I got these pen covers, but they're curved. These. Mary's looking for something she can use. This is pretty flimsy, but I can use it. This might work. I'm, I'm, well, can I knock all those numbers down to the bottom? If I, this would be perfect, but I'm not sure I can get all those numbers knocked down. I have what I wanted out. Let's use this. Oh, here, we can use this. It's even got some flowers. I just need a little plastic blessing stuff. What else is in here? Maybe, maybe even, well, no, that I've got some bread, so I need those breads. I'm looking for glassine pipe stuff. Mary's rattling her bags. <laughs> the St. Louis Stitchers, whenever I go on there, I have to go on mute because Mary rattles her bags and they say it sounds like Mary's eating potato chips. All right, we're going to, we're going to use this envelope. If I can get it open. This came from Keisha. This came from Keisha's auction and I just want the plastic part of it. We'll use the flowers maybe for something in there one in there and I just want the I just want this and what I want to do well I could use this too let's draw it first what I want to do stay with me here what I want to do is make an ink bottle so let's draw an ink bottle now it's going to go it can't be huge because it's going to sit. Oh, this flattened all right. When I flattened that out, I need this to pop up more. I guess you can play and pop it up like that. But I need, I want it to sit on here. Now, do I really want it to sit on? Yeah, I'm going to do that for now. But that's going to be an awful big ink bottle for a little table. So we might just make the ink bottle and set it here for now. And the guest register and maybe I'll make a table to go in here. Because that ink bottle is not going to fit on that little table. Maybe we'll put something else there. So I'm going to draw an ink bottle. And it's not going to be a huge thing. And... Actually, I don't want the cap on it. 
So this is how it looked closed. Something like that. Something like that might put a little. But I want to put a pin in it. So I want it open. Like so. And like this. Like that, like that. And I'm just winging this. I have to tell you guys I'm winging it. So there's an ink bottle. Now I want a pen to fit in there. So my pen, let's just, let's just uh, make a, a pen with a nib on it sort of. I might have to cut that smaller when I cut it out. And you'll see what I'm going to do to that. So let me cut that out. Now the reason I wanted this is I want to put this down here and I guess maybe I could color that. Uh, I was thinking, what was I thinking? I was thinking coloring the inside of the this. We could try both. Let's cut this. I have to experiment. This is total experiment. I haven't tried this out. This is not trial. This is trial and error. This is me learning as I go. Now, if I put some ink on one side and let it dry, and I was thinking, uh, well, if I put permanent ink, if I use real ink, I'll have to let it dry. I can't hit it with the heat gun, or it'll melt the plastic. Let me turn my... And let me look here. I've got ink here someplace. Here. This is De La Rowney FW Blue blue something blue <laughs> so let's let's ex I, i'm not going to experiment on this board though because i might mess it up i don't want to have to clean it mm. there so i think what i want to do i could put it on here but I actually want it on there because I want it to look juicy, is what I'm thinking. So let's just juice this up a little. And maybe I'll even let it run a little. Isn't that interesting? How it... I want to touch it with my hands. <laughs> I want to touch it with my hands. Let me get a little brush. See, I want it to look juicy. And I'm not sure how long it will take this to dry. But it may not matter if I smash it down on that board. Let's. Hmm. Let me experiment here. This is why I'm here to play. I got my cord running under my chair. I'm going to try to blot this a little. Let's see what happens if I blot it a little. Oh, I like that. I wanted to pick up a little of this, thinking that it'll dry faster. You'd think the fan is blowing, it would dry pretty fast, and I think it is drying relatively fast. All right, so I'm gonna set this, let me put the lid on my ink before I spill it, wash out my brush. 
And I could actually close this. Let's just close it. Oh, I like that. It's wet in there, but I kind of like it looking wet. Now, I don't know if that will mold. Um, but what I want to do, what I want to do is put it on that ink bottle. I want it to look like ink. I want it to look juicy like ink. So let's see if I can accomplish that. We're going to cut out this <laughs> wonky ink bottle. And this is going to be a fairly large ink bottle um, for this room. So maybe I'll have my table closer up here and it'll just look like it's closer. I could try to make this a little smaller of an ink bottle. And this is for the guest register. We're going to make a guest register yet. All right. So there's my ink bottle. Now what I want is this to fit over my ink bottle. And maybe I'll just smooth that out a little. And I want some ink in there. I love those bubbles. I like the bubbles. Now the question is, will glue hold that down? We're going to try it. I'm up for trying it. Wet glue on this will probably curl the ink bottle. We're going to try this. And we'll just leave it like that. And then I'm going to take this and put right in there and I can always smish that out a little now let's pick this up this way and we're going to cut that ink bottle out so I'm going to let that dry a little and I'm going to go build the book the register the guest register. Well, no, I want to build the ink pen. This is actually going to be an ink bottle, really. <laughs> but we want an ink pen to go with it. And that's what I was doing here. And what I want... Let me just cut this out a little. Get a, a manageable si size here where I can trim it down. All right, so we're going to wrap it this way. This is going to be an ink pen, believe it or not. It will, I promise. And the nib area. Something like that. And actually that's good enough. Let's trim that off a little. That's going to be the ink pen. That's good enough. I might put a little silver on that or gold paint on that. But what I have here, what I have here is this fuzzy fur and I thought I'd make a feather if I could and I don't know if this is going to work it's just what I saw in here and I'm going to glue this on the handle to make it look like a feather pin might have to go the other way but let's just cut it there and yeah I've got some threads and let's tr actually trim this 
wonky area off. And what I want is for it to go right on here and sort of look like a feather pin. Only this has to be turned that way. <laughs> and I think I might have to use glossy accent for that. We'll see what happens. If it doesn't work, I can always do another idea. <laughs> so we're just going to put a little... If I can see it here. Well, it might help if I take my pen out. And I'm going to smooth that down. And we're going to take this... And put it right here. Come on. Yeah. Doesn't want to stay. I shouldn't have wiped it off, I guess. Let's just try this again. There. Now I'm going to let that dry, but I'm going to take a touch of gold, a touch of gold paint and put on the nib. It just needs a touch. It needs a touch of gold on the nib. And I don't know what I did with my brush. I thought I had it here. Urgh. Did I put it in the... my ink bottle. Where did it fall to? There's my ink bottle. I think I can put that. Oh, there went my brush over the cliff. I'll have to dig it out afterwards. My brush went over the cliff. Over the cliff. All right, I want a touch of gold on the nib. Not on the feather, on the nib. That's the nib. I don't know if that looks like a pen to you, but that's the pen. <laughs> to go with the ink bottle. throw this towel away. Getting in my way. Alright, let's put the gold paint away. And let's see how the ink bottle is doing. We don't need this anymore. Let me put that aside. I think I can cut this. I think I'm liking it. I don't know if you guys, well, let me cut it and then show it to you. Because it's got a bubble there. I'm liking that bubble in there. I'm liking the bubbles. And it might leak out a little. But that's okay if it does. It's liquid. I should keep it over the in case. And I might save that for interest. Oh, I smashed out my bubble. But that's okay too. I like the bubble. I don't know if I can get it back. It'll smash out when I close the book anyway.
Now I could seal this with glossy accent and I might just run some glossy accent over it. Let's see what I'm doing on this side. There's my ink bottle and ink pen. I'm liking it. But I think I'll take a little of this glossy accent. It's still juicy. And I'm going to run it along the edge here. And it will probably stick to that paper. And if it does, if it does, I will, I'll just cut the paper away. I could put the whole glossy accent along the whole thing, but I don't think I want to do that either. I just kind of want to seal up the edges. There. Let's see if I can move that a little to so it won't stick as bad. No, I need the, I need my scissors. I need my palette knife. Yeah. I just want to move this away from all the, shove it over here. There, now we're just going to let that stuff dry for a little bit. And I'm going to make my book. I'm going to make my guest register. I really need to find the, I really need to find that those page dividers because that's what I wanted to use for my elevator. I guess I could use black paper, but that wasn't what I had in mind. We might have to save the elevator for another day because I can't put my hands on the... Oh, there they are. I saw them. I saw them. Here. Yay. After all of that, I found what I wanted. Good. These are the plastic ones. They look white, but they are plastic. They say plastic. So that's what I want. All right. But now I need to do... Um, I need to do my... got wet on here. Um, guest book. So I got an ink bottle and a pen. That's a lot of trouble. Let me put it over here to dry. But otherwise, I'll mess it up. Now, I want a guest book. And I'm going to save this out of interest. I'm going to save it out of interest. Where? <laughs> Over here. Throw that little scrap away. I want a guest book. But I think I'm going to have to have a table in here. This page is going to turn okay. I think I'm going to have to paint this back of this, though, too. And um, I might bind this book. I might take this page out completely. In fact, I think I will, because it's coming out anyway. Um, and bind this book in the same way as Becky... Um, I'm calling it Becky's Binding, but it really isn't Becky. Becky was the most recent one who showed us how to do that. I think Tanya taught it in her one of her journaling classes. But I think I'll bind that book just right here and here. And the book will be, this will be one page in the book. This will be one page. And I could even do some pop-out pages if I make them separate pages. But we'll get to that another time. So let me take... Let me get rid of some of this. A scrap. Put my ruler away where I can find it. I have to put things away as I go or I'll never find them again. I got this knife out. Scissors over here. What time is it? It's 9.10. Um, I did want to do my elevator tonight. Let's take the... 
Uh, what, what did I do with my knife? Here, let's take this. Let's take this page out completely. I'm just, as you can see, I'm, I'm designing this book as I go. But I think it'll work better if I remove the page. I kind of like it like that. So let's get rid of this now. Now here we are. And actually, let me put my glue away. I need to do the the guest register and a table. I'm done with the ink and the glossy accent. Ink, the glossy accent here. And the ink. The ink. Where did I get the ink? Here. Alright. Push all this away. And I'm going to turn this pink piece upside down so you have a better view of my page. I'm done with that knife for now. So I want to do the guest register. And it's just going to be a little journal type thing. And I could do it. Let me look. Let me look here. Where do I see those? Is it this one? No. Hold it, I'm looking again. I'm looking for stuff. I might have to stand up to find it. Where did I put it? Well, let me stand up. That's the only way I'm going to find it. <laughs> I've got too much stuff around me. I can't find anything. I want my little Susan Lennart book. I saw it here where I was, when I was looking just a minute ago. Where did it go off to? Well, all this fabric, my art journal, this journal, keep that out. It amazes me how things, how I lose things in, in a stack of paper. Here, it's falling down. I want this. That is what I want. I'm going to make a, a little guest register. And it's going to be a simple thing. <laughs> of course it's going to be simple. Let's put this fabric back up. Everything Mary does is simple, isn't it? All right. Let's move this up here. And... So when I make the guest register, I want some fancy dancy paper. And it could even have been writing in it. So I might take a sheet here. I have to figure out which one I want. Tray bien. Oh, this is in French. 
Huh. Oh, maybe this. I don't want it too frilly, though. It's got all those pretty ladies on it. Let's go back here. Ooh, this might work. Let's grab one of these. And it's going to be a small register. And then I'm going to use the rest for pages. So let's get my cutting board out. I kind of like these chairs this way, um, but I'm, I'm wary that it's going to flatten down completely. If you want them to pop out, you're going to have to move them that way. Let's get my cutting board out and maybe, hmm, maybe about about two inches, one and a half inch, about one and a half. tall so and shall we make it square shall we make it by one and a half one and a half is three this is going to be the cover let's just cut a whole bunch of one and a half inch strips and figure out what I want for the cover and the rest are going to be pages it's going to be a simple affair One and a half. Oh, I don't know if I want to cut that lady. Well, I'm going to cut her head off. <laughs> Sorry, lady. I don't think I can cut her head off. That's awfully cruel. Let's, let's hold that one for a bit. So I guess this is the best for the front and back. So let's make, let's cut it at three. Well, it all have to be three. Let's cut it at three and an eighth, three and uh, three and a fourth, and cut the pages at three. Yeah. So cut this at three. Cut this at three. We'll have a a little dealy bob left. Cut this at three. Is that right? That might have to come a little bit shorter. Let's cut this at three. And this at three. And I got a little left, so. Oh, boy, I like that. I'm going to leave that. I don't want to mess that up. Let's take another page. I got two of these books, so I can pretty much play in these. In fact, I could use this back cover. But no, let's just go with what I have. So... Wow, this has got borders to it. I didn't really want borders. Let's get rid of them. And... I'm making the guest register and it'll it will have writing on this side, but it will this will be writing, but you can the guests can write over that is my thought. Alright, now I'm I'm making this at one and a half, but I might make it a little bit smaller in the end. One and a half, three, 
and three. That should be enough. So I want to pile all these together. I want to save those. I'm going to pile these all up. These are going to be the pages. But I'm thinking I want my pages a little bit shorter because I want them to fit in here a little shorter. So I'm going to trim them at, I got one and a half, one and a half. Can I cut those at one and a half? Maybe that one's wider. This one's... Uh, let's make it a teeny bit shorter here. Well, if I can. Teeny bit shorter. And a teeny bit shorter. Now I just happened to get this beautiful ribbon in that. So let's bind it with this ribbon. So these are going to be the pages. Whoops. Page. Did I get that one cut? I don't think I got that one cut. I guess that's good. Uh-oh, was that the... Yeah. This is the cover, and these are the pages. And so they're going to go... Let's see, let's put this one this way. And it is going to go in here like this. And we're just going to take a... A little stitch with that ribbon in here and then I'm gonna let it fall out and down I think so yeah. this might be a mighty big clip but we're gonna use it so hold on to this and Penelope she says I'm here for you Mary I'm here for you. Let's use this needle. We could use this red thread, but oh, I unthreaded it. <laughs> We're going to use this ribbon because it came in that package that I opened tonight and it works. And it's a big long piece of ribbon. And oops, I should have folded it in half. Let's fold it in half. Right there. The ink bottle is as big as the guest register. We're not going for perspective in this book, let me tell you. We're not going for perspective. I'd have to make a pretty small ink bottle. All right, so let's make a, let's make a hole here and a hole here. Let's come in through there. I hope I'm doing this right. In through there. Pull my ribbon through. We'll let it hang. In fact, we could do a little wrap around here. I think I will. Because I got plenty of ribbon. We'll try this. Do a little wrap around the top of the journal. Yes come down into this hole 
Do another wrap around. Whoops. Got it caught on the. Do another wrap around. Go through this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna tie it here and let it hang. Got plenty of ribbon on this. Almost too much. Almost too much. Now hopefully I got that tight enough because I'm going to tie it in a knot. And we're just going to let that hang down that way and scissors snip it. All right, so there's my little guest register. Simple, easy peasy. We might put a paint a little house on that later, but not tonight. And I want this to kind of hang down like so. Might trim it a little. Don't want to trim it too much, but just a little. All right, so let's see what I have here. Get my ribbon out of the way. Get my scraps out of the way. We'll save this. Save that, all this scrappy stuff. We'll save that. Scraps, they annoy me. Get them out of the way. Put my, give my needle back to Penelope. Now I should be working from the back of the book to the front. But that means that I have to know what my last page is. So I'll just do these pages as I... Alright, I really do need a table here. I really do need a table. But my, my book will go there, and let's see how my ink bottle and pen are doing. That's still pretty wet. I'm going to have to let that dry overnight. The ink inside, this is on top here, the ink is on the inside. But I think it makes it look, uh, and let's see if my pen will come off. This is my pen. I'm pretty proud of my pen. So it'll go like so, but this is still wet. So I'm going to have to let that dry before I put it in here. But it'll go, it'll go in here with my guest register. So let's put all this over here. A table. Can I find a decent table? Can I find a decent table to put in there? A picture of one. Let me see what I have here. I have all sorts of junk. <laughs> all sorts of magazines. Let me put this over here. I'm going to look for a table to go on there. Let's see what I have. It doesn't have to be a Victorian one. It would be nice if it was, but it doesn't have to be. Look at this. Very cool stuff. We want a table. Ooh, there's food. We'll have to feed our guests, but I don't know if I can find a table. I could make a table. But I'd rather find one and make a pop-up type thing. And there they're seated at a kitchen table. I love these magazines. I love them. Seeds, 
recipes, bread. I don't think we're going to find anything in there. Let's look in good housekeeping and see if they have a table. See, I don't plan this out. <laughs> You're seeing me as I create what I go through to find what I want. I'm going to just kind of thumb through here. It's hard to th flip through some of these pages. Ooh, there's sort of a table. It's awful full of stuff, though. There's a table. It's not the right angle. I might find something in one of these magazines. The flooring guide. I'm not looking at chat. Let's see. Hi, Tim. Becky said good night. She said she's too pooped to party any longer. Have a wonderful weekend. She said that 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Tim came in a few minutes ago. Hi, Tim. Tell them I'm, I'm just doing my bed and breakfast lobby. I'm just off in my own world. Everybody's try probably trying to chat with me and I'm not watching. I'm looking for a table to put in my bed and breakfast area. I might have to look in that book and tear something out of that book. I haven't found anything. I haven't found anything yet. I still want to do the elevator. What time is it? 9.30. I'm not going to get it done if I leave it. If I leave at uh, 10 o'clock. Come on, there has to be a table in here. There's a pretty doll pillow. Tea service. Couch. Ooh, there's a globe. This is writer in residence. This is about is this about Jen Karen? Jen Karen. There's a globe. There's a bathhouse. I'm looking for a table. Gary, you should have had this all set. Any good any good streamer would just have it all have it all there. Ooh. Now this might work. Let's tear this out. That might work. It's kind of wild for this piece, but we'll see. It's the best I've found so far. I've already torn out of this magazine. That's not. I want a coffee table type thing. Tim says, what's everybody up to on this late evening or early morning, wherever you are in the world? Well, we're doing interactive houses. Interactive houses. Now see that? That could work too. I don't know. Ooh, there's a pretty table. It's a formal dining room. If I find anything, it will be in one of these Victoria magazines. Candelabra. are in England. Tea 
tea sets. You can tell that what I like. I love all this Victorian stuff. Look at that bookshelf. Look at those books. Oh, my heart. Look at that. Library. There's a little table. Gardens. Build your dream bed and breakfast, Mary. I had that marked. I think because of the chair. I don't see anything on here. I could use this maybe. I had it marked. Let's tear this out. I'm going to go with this because I don't want to spend all night looking for a table. Although there might be something in this catalog. No, I don't see anything. Alright. Back to my room. Back to my room. I am going to, this is my room, this is my lobby, these are my chairs, I have a, a guest register and an ink pen, and I think I'm going to make a table out of this area, and put it in here, let's fussy cut this out, let's cut here, just cut across here for now just to shorten it down shorten this down and let's see I don't think I want the books I could put this book on there and cut those off so let's cut here there, cut here, maybe leave one book on there, so the couch is going to come here, it needs to go in here, Like so. Let's cut that. So that'll fit right in there. And yeah, I think this is going to work. And then the arm of that couch comes to about to there. see where I marked. Let's see. That goes in here. I'll shorten this up. Right in there. That arm comes right there. Cut this off here. Oh, we're going to get that book. Good thing we left the other one. And we're just going to kind of guesstimate here. In fact, yeah, I'm liking that. Right in there. Could even be a little bit smaller. Yeah, that 
looks at the table to me. And cut it off here. All right. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's just I'm just getting the idea. I'm getting the flavor of a table here. I wish I could see that better. I'm happy with that. Trim this off just a little. Put that right in there. Now my guest register is going to go on that table. Probably just about like this. And, uh, I think I'll just tape it on there and let it, let it flop open. Maybe I'll put it more like so. Like that. And then the ink bottle, which isn't done, the ink bottle is going to go right here. So it will go something like that. I think so. It's kind of big, but I'm happy with it. I have to let that dry. So let's go ahead and put this down. And I hate to use wet glue, but I'm going to have to. Let's get all this stuff out of the way. I could save this for something. Throw this stuff away. I don't need all these scraps. Hi, Suze. Oh. Julie said, night, Becky. Melissa says, good night, Mary. I've been up since 5.30. I know, I've been up early too. But that's okay. I understand you guys needing to go to bed. I understand it perfectly. Anne went to bed. Oh, the Suze is here. Suze is still with me. Thank you, Suze. Suze says, Mary, Mary. <laughs> Thank you for hanging with me, Suze. Thank you for hanging with me. It's really not that late. It's only it, it's only about a quarter till ten. <laughs> it's only about a quarter till ten. It isn't like it's three o'clock in the morning. What are you guys going to bed for? <laughs> oh dear, I'm just teasing. All right, I'm going to put this book down here with tape. But I need to put this down first. I hate to wet glue it. I could glue stick it. Let's go get my glue stick. Hold the phone. I've got to run and get my glue stick. It's still out in the dining room. Suze, are you working on anything? Are you working on anything, Suze? Are you doing any artwork? Allie Kay is here. Allie Kay says, I'm here, Mary. I've just been lurking. Thank you, Allie. I appreciate knowing somebody's here with me yet. I appreciate knowing somebody's here with me. Actually, there are 33 people in the room, so 
if they are gone, they, they're they leaving their check going for me. So thank you for that. Sue says she's, she's fiddling. F-I-L-L-D-I. Fiddling with fabric beads. <laughs> uh, fabric beads. That sounds awesome. Sue as I'm cleaning up, I'm bound to get your book put together. I can't tell you when, your box put together. I can't tell you when, but someday that box is going to come to you. I want to move this over just a tidbit more. I've been promising to send a Sue's a box for the last, what, has it been two years yet, Sue's? <laughs> How long have we known each other? I am just, I'm bad with mailing. I'm just bad. I never used to be that bad. We're not going to go into that story. All right, I'm happy with having this table here and this chair. I'd like to have some more big pillows in here, but I'm going to have to turn the page. So like I said, when the guests come in to register, I don't want them to, um, I want them to feel like they're walking into a, a home. I don't want them to feel like they're walking into a hotel. So that is my reasoning. And maybe I should zoom in a little so you can see this a little bit better. So, um, in here is where they register. And this is not going to, this is going to be taped down just because I don't want it falling out of the book. And it, this represents a registration book right here. You can open it up, and I could write guests. Got little pages and little pictures in it. And I'm just going to tape it down. See, when I do something like this, I feel like I lose a lot of people. When That's one reason why I like to do the lists and things and talk with you. Because I, I, I have your attention. When I'm doing this, I'm off into my world creating. I'm off into my world creating. I need to put this at a different angle. Maybe more like, more like that maybe. Yeah. I'm happy with this. Now, We've got the fireplace behind there. We've got some flowers in here. We've got a beautiful lamp. I could see a cushion in here someplace, but I don't want to get too much on there. So, I want to work on the elevator. And I think I'm going to have to paint this whole side again. And, yep, I'm going to paint it, even though it's whatever's on this side is on this side. Let's get out another piece of parchment paper and put on the back here. And I'm going to paint it the same way I painted. I'm going to have it this color. That color kind of matches the walls in here. And I'm going to write the word lobby. Lobby. I, I, I'll probably document this, maybe outline it. But we'll come back to that. So this is an interactive element here. My book is an interactive element. My ink bottle is will not be interactive, but I'll have the pen. Uh, the pen might be interactive. And then on the back, I'm going to do an elevator. And the elevator is going to go up to the attic. 
the elevator is going to go up to the attic and we're going to try to work on that now I don't know if I'll get it completely done we'll see how far I get this gets all clogged up Mary, 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 Mary. It is clogged up. Penelope, I'm just going to take another pen. I'll get you new ones if I need to. I got some of that. And then we want some of that green that I had out. And I keep putting that in the way. Marsh green. Where did I put it? Here. Marsh green. Put some of that on there. I thank you guys for even lurking. At least I know you're with me. And Oh, my brush went over the my brush went over the cliff. I have to dig that out before I go to bed tonight or it will dry back there. And I don't think it was too painy. I think I'll be okay as far as that goes. Let's get another brush out. I am hard hard on brushes, so I'm I buy these craft brushes at like at Walmart and everything. And I'm just going to mix it right on the page. And I'll probably have to mix another batch of this. Because it dries thin. It dries transparent. And we're at least going to do the elevator. Now I might put some other things like an umbrella stand and a baggage car, a luggage cart by the elevator. Maybe a coat rack. But I can't do all that tonight. We're going to start with the elevator. Alright, let's dry this. So it says a big bottle of buttermilk. If so, where did you find it? Um, this is... Is this... Uh, this is deco art. So I probably got it at Hobby Lobby because I can't get deco art at Walmart. So either it, it, it was definitely at Hobby Lobby too. They prob they might sell it on their website. I don't know, but Hobby Lobby is the only place I have access to that sells deco art paint. Unless I order it from Amazon or something. And I don't really order paint from Amazon. Um, Walmart carries Apple Barrel. That's pretty good. Except it's stuck on this side. I'll have to flatten that out. Um, got a an air bubble there. Probably from the other side, but I don't mind. Let's put a little bit more. Let's do another layer. Let's see if I can cover this with another little layer. I love 
I love this buttermilk. And I like Georgia Clay, and I like Tuscan Red, and uh, Blue Bonnet, or Cottonwood Blue. I like that. I like Cobalt Blue. I don't generally go for greens, but this is a pretty mint green that I'm that I'm changing with the buttermilk color. And this kind of matches the wall on the other side of this page. So that's why I'm doing this. Alright, I'm liking that. And let's just kind of wipe my brush off here. I don't have my dictionary out. I've got too much paint on that brush. Alright. Let's give this a dry. The elevator is going to be fun. I'm not sure. Um, I probably won't get it entirely done because I'm going to have to let it air dry. But we'll get it drawn on there. And you'll see what I mean in a bit. Now this is a Victorian bed and breakfast, so the elevator is going to be very Victorian in nature. And I found one that I think is really cool. Well, actually I found two. And you know what? I got buttermilk there. I don't know if I can... I might just leave that. Let's see if I can color that a little. At least tone it down a little. Yeah, a little bit better. <laughs> Have to dry this. I need it to be dry. And this is insisting on sticking to my paper. I guess it's still okay. It's pretty thin up here. So I might have to I might have to do something with this area cuz it's it's pretty thin. And while this is a lot sturdier so I'm liking it so far. It's pretty damp though. And it's got some wrinkles in it, but by the time I, time I get done with it, it's not going to matter. So I'm thinking an elevator that goes up, it will go clear up to the attic. But since this is a bed and breakfast, it probably has, well, the ground floor, now this is a zeroing in on the room, but you probably have the ground floor, second floor, and a third floor, and the attic will go clear up in here. The attic will be way up in here. We'll probably call this steeples, these steeples attic. This this part in here will probably be the attic, and maybe a, a third floor, a second floor, and a first floor. So I'm thinking three floors in this mansion, but here we're zeroing in we're kind of like enlarging the lobby area and like i said don't think of this like a hotel lobby this is like you're coming to a a home still kind of wet let me dry it just a little bit more So now I was thinking of putting my elevator here, but if I want it to go on this side, the elevator really has to go over here. So I'm going to put the elevator going up here, and the attic will be right up here at the very top, probably where these points are, and maybe this area in here. And look, there's the chimney. It's actually got two chimneys. And let's see, the fireplace is here. So, um, 
on here, that fireplace would have to have a chimney in there someplace. If I can get this off of my picture here. Got a little scrapey paint on it, which is okay. It's just an altered book. But I think what I'm going to do when I bind this book is bind it on the sides here, here, and here. And it'll flip like this. And I'm going to have to strengthen this. I can tell that right now. Because of, of this. So, let's go on with my elevator. And what I wanted, and I'm sure glad I found them. I was worried I wasn't going to find them. I'm going to use a transparent, and let's get it out here. Let's put my brush in the water. Don't need this right now. What did I drop on the floor? A pen, my Sharpie pen, no. All right. So I'm opening this package of page protectors and I only need one and these are these are are translucent they're not transparent they're not totally clear they're translucent kind of like a stencil material it's what I like to use them for it's what I like to use them for but we don't need this whole thing we only need and I wonder if my cutting trimmer will cut this. Let's try it. Let's try it. That's my scoreboard. <laughs> Where the trimmer go? Over here. I cannot put my scoreboard and trimmer next to this case that swirls around because it gets caught on the case. So I'm constantly having to move it. I, I want to see if I can cut this with my trimmer. And I can. Yay. Beautiful. Maybe I'll save that for something. Alright, so I think I want maybe maybe about two and a half Let's see how many inches that is from here. About, about two and a half inches, I think. Two and a half. We might have to cut another half inch off of that. But we're going to go with two and a half. Then I still got this for a stencil or something. So this is going to go here. Now I'm tr I want this elevator to go up and down. And this is transparent. I might have to do another piece in here to make it move up and down. I have to think about it. Let's cut another piece that will move up and down this way. We could move this up and down, but I, 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 I will probably have to draw on that, and I'm not quite ready to do that yet. So we're gonna cut another piece just for the fun of it. This is two and a half, so I think I'll make this two. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I'm, I'm guessing at this. I've never done this before. <laughs> My piece is getting thinner. My stencil's getting thinner. All right. So, we only need this to go to about here, because let's just say my, my attic is right in here. In fact, I could draw a line. Maybe I will. Get my ruler out. Draw a line. 
my attic will come right about right about there. So all of this is going to be attic. Now, let's get a pan out. Let's just draw a line there. Light line. So my elevator only has to come up to here. And I actually want this to be the elevator piece that moves up and down. But I might have to make a slit in there. Let, let's mark this first. Let's mark this to cut it. We're going to cut the bottom one right here. And we're also going to cut a slit in here so the elevator can go up and down. So pretend this is the slit. This will come through through the slit and go up and down that way. And I'll probably color, maybe put washi tape on the sides. We'll see. So my slit, this is going to be longer than this piece. Let's cut this piece. I'll cut it with my trimmer again. And reach, reach for my trimmer. And we can put a little person in my elevator. We'll put a little Tim Holtz doll in my elevator for the fun of it. All right. So, now where's my thin piece? <laughs> where's my thin piece? You can, can hardly see it. Now, get this out of my way. And I need my cutting board that I got out of my way. What I did with it, we'll use this one. Because I want to make a cut. And, uh, where do I want to make it? Oh, I need this. Where did it go? What did I do with my page? So this is the shaft of the elevator. This is the elevator. And it's going to go up and down like this. And it'll be an interactive pull. I don't know... Um, I might have to put a little handle on this and actually cut this off and let the handle pull. We're going to, I'm going to determine how I'm going to pull that. I might just leave a little tab. I have to decide that. I could leave the tab up at the top. So this is two and a half. So I'm actually going to draw a line. A fourth inch. If I can hold this still enough. I'm going to draw a line along here. Get it straight. That's straight. Where's my pen? Draw a line in here. And this is permanent marker. It should stay on there and it shouldn't smear. And we're going to draw another line on the other side the same way. Oh, 
like that. Now I need a shaft. I need to make it a shaft. And I'm determining whether I want it to go under like this or if I want it to go above. I guess I can determine that after I make my slits. So I'm going to make the slits about a half an inch in. Yeah, about a half inch in. Hopefully this will work. If it doesn't, I'll cut another piece. I can see it in my head, but I've never really done it before. So I want a half inch in. Approximately. Here. I'm going to make a slit there. And another slit a half inch in over here. On this side. Now if I have this on the outside, if I want to put a person in here, if I have it on the inside, I can put my person in there and it'll slide up and down. If I put it on the outside, my person will have to go in there on this side. I guess I can still decide when, when I get these slits cut. So let's cut my slits and see what happens here. It's just paper. It's all just paper. Hi Angie. She said, did you all go to bed? I think a lot of them did leave Angie. They get tired, and if I'm not chatting at them, you know, if I'm not talking to them, I go into my world when I do this stuff. I have to, because I can't art and chat at the same time. I'm not that good. I wish I could, but I can't. So, I think a lot of people just get tired of nothing happening as far as the chat goes. And they, they got other things to do, and... They go to bed. Now is that going to fit in there? I might have to make that slit a little bit bigger. And that's okay with me. I don't care. If I'm tired, I go to bed. <laughs> I'm still doing my art. And I guess I could trim this down just a little rather than trying to make those because I got those going out clear to the end here. And I'm not sure I want them to go out anymore. Well, so let's trim this down just a little bit more if I can. Find my trimmer again. I'm making an elevator. <laughs> so we're going to trim it. It's at Two, we're going to make it maybe one and seven eighths if I can. One and seven eighths. Let's hope that cuts it. Whoops, it got a little slip there. Yeah. What I did there. We'll see. Let's cut this off. This is longer anyway, so if I have to cut this little slit off, I can. Let's see if that fits in that slit. Yeah. So there's my elevator. It'll go up and down. Now I need another slit down here. So let's do that. Let's cut another slit. Oops. Hold up my blade is coming off of my my blade is coming off of my trimmer
There we go. So I want to cut this slit here. Now this is just the basis of it. It's going to look like an elevator by the time I get done. <laughs> oh dear Mary. Angie says, I'm watching, eating, drinking, and chatting all at the same time. Ha! <laughs> uh, Angie, thank you for sticking with us. Julie says, sorry, I'm here, but sorting my craft stuff. Well, good for you, Julie. I'm glad to hear that you're sorting stuff. And you're trying to make that one corner accessible. I'm tired, but not because of you. Aw. But because of work. Julie, didn't you tell us that your father came home from the hospital? Did you tell us that? i got to be careful here. Maybe if I turn this over. If he did, yay for that. No, I'm not getting this. I have to hold it tighter. Maybe if I just cut it by hand. Along this line. And keep Fran, uh, Fran, uh, Parker, is that her last name? In your hearts and prayers. Uh, her, her mother passed away. There we go. All right, so this is the elevator. And it'll be taped down and it'll go up and down like that. Now, right now, I have this on the inside. Let me put this one back in. I'll have to put a stop on it, maybe, so it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't slide down to the <laughs> so the elevator doesn't fall. We don't want anybody to fall. There we go. So we'll have to put a stop on it, maybe. So we'll put the stop. How am I going to do it? Yeah, see, we don't want it to slide. That's what's happening. It's falling out. So I need a stop on it. Let me pull it, put it back in. So I want it to stop here. What am I going to do? How am I going to put a stop on it? I have to think about the stop. Put a, a piece across here right at the top. So I'll need a piece going across here that'll go across there so that when I'm pulling it down, these will keep it from going clear in. So I'm happy with that, but now um, shall we put a person in there just for the fun of it? Let's find a Tim Holtz person. Find a little person and put in there. And, uh, what shall we use? Who shall we put in the elevator? Gotta be Victorian. That lady might fit in there. Gotta be a skinny person. <laughs> Where's the beginning of this package here? All right. She fits in there. Almost. Might have to trim her down, but I'm thinking a, a little one. She would fit. He would fit. He would go up to the elevator, too. See, we could put some Tim Holtz paper dolls in this book. He would fit. This could be the judge. This could be Benjamin Cook. I kind of like the idea of putting... Oh, here. Here's the judge. Here's the judge. We'll put the judge in the elevator. Yeah, perfect. Where's Lily? We need Lily, too. I'll we'll find Lily in here. She doesn't need to go in the elevator, but it would be nice if she could. 
Look at this guy. <laughs> he looks like he's going to visit Lily. I need to find Lily. Where's Lily? And these could be their kids. Where's Lily? Oh, this is this Lily? That might be Lily. Let's see if I can find another Lily in here. I love the kids. Oh, <laughs> that's Katrina, maybe. Here's another one. Lily. That might be Lily that we have out. I'm still looking to see if there's another Lily in here. This could be the uh, Benjamin the First. Kind of like him. Oh, she could be Lily, too. She could be Lily. She could be Lily, but she doesn't fit in the elevator. His youngest son could, could or grandson could have gone off to war. See, so you could play with these characters in here in all sorts of ways. That's what I love about these Tim Holtz. What's what I love about Tim Holtz? There's another little girl. About these paper dolls. You know, you can almost play dolls with them. Wonderful pieces. Look at this. Very cute. She, let's see. No, she could be Lily. One of these could be Lily. She could be a granddaughter. All right. So, let's see what I have here. Oh, I got more over here. Wait a minute. Oh. Grandkids. Little kids. These are all fit in there. She could be Lily. She looks like Lily to me. I'm looking for Lily. <laughs> I got several Lilies, but I think I like this one the best. She looks like she could be mar married to the judge. And all these others are relatives. I think I'll keep them separate. Uh, I don't think he's of the same race, so sorry. But, all right. So here's Judge Benjamin Cook and his wife, Lily. All right. Well, I'm going to put him back in there. I'll probably change my mind a hundred times before I finally use them. Put these back if I can find the opening <laughs> with my left hand. Come on, open them and sell to me. Get in there all at once, all at once, please. Please, almost all except for this little creature. There we go. All right. So we're going to have, I'm going to keep Lily out, but I think I'm going to put the judge in here. Now, in order to get him in the elevator, if we stop it there, we're going to have to pull this clear out in order to put him in. And I'm just going to tack a little piece of tape there for now. I want to decorate the elevator. But for right now, just to show how he's going to go up and down in his elevator, in his Victorian bed and breakfast. 